Hello everybody, this is Tekka. In this video, what I am going to be doing is dressing by far the most common complaint, concern, voiced opinion, whatever it may be that I get on this channel. And that is in regards to the Linux terminal. Uh, no matter what way I go with a tutorial, a guide, or anything, somebody is going to have a complaint. Now, if I make a guide and I open up the terminal and I make it real easy, I just say copy and paste these couple commands and you're done, somebody's going to be like, oh, that's extremely not noob friendly. That's going to overwhelm or scare somebody who's new away from Linux from using the terminal. And I do kind of stand that, but people are smarter than that generally. It's not too difficult to copy and paste a couple commands, especially if it's going to make something a lot easier. And that's generally what the terminal does when it comes to doing very simple, easy tasks, is it just makes everything a little bit easier. And then on the other side, if I do something through a graphical utility that could be easily done through a terminal, there's a whole bunch of people arguing, why did I not just do this in the terminal? Why this? Why that? When using graphical utilities is nice because it actually shows what these tools can do, what these specific tools can do, which will make you avoid having to open up the terminal altogether. And a lot of the times these graphic utilities will actually visualize things a lot better than a terminal could, especially if you're somebody who is newer and doesn't necessarily know what all the commands are or what most of the commands are, or know what they're doing or anything like that. So no matter what, if you're using the terminal like we have here, or you're using a graphical utility, you're going to get what you're trying to do done. They function the same way. Uh, you can think of a graphical utility as just a graphical script. And when you click a button, it's basically just executing a command and it could go both ways. Now wh what I'm going to do real quick is just show you some of the common things that I do in the terminal and show you it done in the graphical user interface and you can decide what is easier. Now here I have a terminal right now I'm running Fedora and what we're going to do real quick is just a sudo DNF update. And what this is going to do is just completely update our system. It's going to check the repositories. And one of the things I like about doing general package man management stuff on the terminal is I can see exactly what it is doing. I get a whole list of everything that it's going to be updating. Make sure OBS is not in here and hit enter and it's going to go ahead and update those packages. I can get very detailed information on the download speeds, what specific package it's upgrading, updating, everything. Now you don't have to do this through the terminal, obviously. You could go ahead and just open up your software center, head over to updates, and you're going to see what you have available to update. It's not going to give you as much detailed information. You can see it says OS updates and Firefox. Quick moment to interject. If you actually just click on one of those items to update in the graphical utility, it's going to give you a full detailed list of everything it's updating like you would in the terminal. Forgot to mention this, so that's just another point for the GUI when in reality, the uh, OS updates were a lot of these, some of these packages, and then Firefox is in here. So if I go over here, it's still gonna want me to restart and update through this because that's unfortunately how uh, uh, Fedora works. But if I were just to reboot my system, it should go ahead and update for me. But that's just one little example. Uh, one of the few situations that I can think of where I absolutely need to use a terminal to access a graphical utility is something in like Endeavor OS. Uh, you only have yay or Pac-Man for the package management. If you do a yay, Pamac, all, you'll go ahead and get a graphical utility. But another common thing that I do in the terminal is edit the FS tab. I should have kept this open. There we go. If you do like a sudo nano, I believe it's in the ETC and fs tab this right here is the oh that's not fs here good thing i got the password wrong <laughs> sudo nano etc fs tab go ahead and type in my password this is basically the file that's going to manage your hard drives your ssds your mv mmes whatever it is on your system and automatically mount them when your system boots up now this is going to mount your root partition your boot partition all that but here you can go ahead and add additional drives such as your backup hard drives, things like that. You can do it through this. And if you do it through this, like I like to do, and there's any issues, I know what's wrong. I could go ahead and access it through my BIOS or through a flash drive and go ahead and fix it. But this is like technically the proper way to do it. 
but you can easily automatically mount drives through a graphical utility. So if I just open up GNOME Disks, and let's say I wanted to go ahead and actually mount this backup drive that I have. So let's zoom in here. Right here, this four terabyte hard drive is my backup drive. And if I go over here under this main partition I have, click the little settings dial, I could go ahead and edit the mount options. And from here, you can set things to automatically mount on startup. So right here it says mount on startup, it's already selected, and we can change the mount points. If I wanted to, I can undo this, and here is where I can, one, make sure it mounts at startup, change the actual mount location, add all my different tags and anything I'd want to, change the display name, things like that. All this you could do in that FS tab folder or file, but you could also easily do it through here in a much easier laid out format that will automatically do everything for you. So you're less likely to run any run into any significant issues. And another thing, um, one thing you need to do when you go ahead and start up Fedora, I'm gonna open up Firefox here and go over to the RPM Fusion website. So if I go RPM Fusion, go over to the RPM configuration. And the easiest way to do this, in my opinion, is just to simply copy and paste this command in terminal and then copy and paste a couple other of these commands to get all the uh, things you need post install. But you don't even need to open up the terminal to do this. If you go over here, it says graphical setup via Firefox browser. If I went ahead and just clicked on this, it's going to open an RPM for the RPM Fusion free release. If I just hit open, it's probably not gonna work right because I already have it, or you can see that I can uninstall it through here. And that is one way to go ahead and enable the RPM Fusion. It's almost as easy as the terminal. You could go either way with this, but that's just one example. And I've done a couple different videos on my favorite terminal applications and like, for example, BTOP is one that's wonderful, it's beautiful, it shows everything going on in your system, but you can obviously just open up a system monitor, see all your processes, see all your resource consumption, look at your file systems and see how much uh, space you have available in whatever drives. The graphical utilities work perfectly fine, but just the feel of the terminal is a lot nicer to me and it's all a matter of preference. And no matter what way I go in a, in a tutorial or anything like that, you could go either way. It's a lot more work to go through both methods when both methods work completely fine and copying a paste command in one situation might be easier, while in another situation it might give the user more options and a better understanding of what's going on if you do something in a graphical utility. Either way, the point of this video is to just kind of rant for a minute. No. You do not need to use the terminal, generally, if you're in Linux, especially if you're uh, in a system that includes the graphical stores and a bunch of the things that you're gonna need just pre-installed. And then if you're doing something like Endeavor OS or an Arch system, you're, you're gonna need to be in the terminal here or there. Um, and even other distributions, if you're in OpenSUSE, for example, they have a YAST, a YAST graphical utility that you could go ahead and jump in and do everything you need to do. And that's just one example. If there's something you need to do in the terminal, there's a graphical utility that will probably let you do it. There's a few exceptions here and there. But other than that, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, this video was supported and sponsored by you guys, our YouTube members and Patreon supporters. Thank you, Mitchell Valentino, Phil Matt, Kyle, and Timo, Anthony. You guys are awesome, and all the other Techie and Techie Plus members are as well. I thank you all so much. Uh, if you're interested in supporting the channel, you go ahead and hit the join button down below or go over to Patreon and support me over there, whatever your platform of choice is. If you don't feel like going that far in your support, a simple subscribe and ringing that bell so you do not miss any future content uploads is good enough for me. Uh, with all that said, I'm going to link to some of the uh, kind of videos that you might have seen or that I mentioned throughout this video, uh, either hitting the I above or maybe going down into the description if I actually remember to put those in there. Now that I said this, I should hopefully remember. Uh, with all that said, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and goodbye.